So it's just more fundamental confluences from the smart money, right? Um, this is the smart money concepts. Anyone who, who's talk, who talks about smart money concepts and doesn't talk about fundamental analysis, how can you be smart and you're not talking about fundamental analysis? That's no slight to, to anyone who's done trade technical analysis, but this is the smart money. This is the smart money, you know, Derek Halpenny, head of research at Global Markets, MUFG, is not talking about technical analysis. He's talking about the reasons why they're getting long and short, you know, based off of real smart money concepts, which is GDP, interest rates, inflation, you know, risk off and risk on. Um, just basically what's going on this week. Uh, just some reminders. I know there's a lot of new uh uh, guys that have obviously joined so I, i'm gonna have to you know obviously go over um some old um or something old but uh, like it's, it's a negative thing but just uh i have to repeat myself you know when it comes to um i guess, I guess getting you guys up to speed with um you know fundamentals etc and also what's going on this week and some technical analysis so hopefully this uh, won't be too long maybe an hour to two hours. Anyways, uh, question was basically, I had two questions uh, that were pretty much phrased in the same way. And um, I think this was Rishi said from last week, uh, you focus on fundamental analysis, but he's bothered um, as to, um, one second. Yeah, but bothered with lots of article news between which one is useful and which one is not. And then also I had, um, you know, a question that says, uh, have, no, where is it? Sorry, uh, I was supposed to put it together. Uh, have I copied the same two things? I think I have. No, the other question was, apologies, guys. The other question was, the questions for group call, which was this one, which is, um, no, this one, sorry. Um, there's a lot of information sources to potentially look at what is my personal routine, right? So Rishi's asking, you know, that he's pretty much confused and maybe a bit overwhelmed with everything that's going on with it when it comes to fundamental analysis. And uh, the second question was pretty much uh, the same thing. What is my routine? So in order to not get overwhelmed and to, I guess, get myself into the routine, what I do is basically what I show you in the weekend analysis video. So who's not watched the uh, the uh, fundamental analysis video? And I mean, maybe some of you may not have watched it, the new guys anyway, but in the trading channels video, yeah, in the trading channels video, if you go here, I pretty much post video analysis in here. And on the 2nd of April, I've posted the weekly fundamental analysis video. So this is pretty much my process. So what I do is I look at the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. I look at it from a macro perspective and I say, okay, what's the general theme or themes of the market? I'll be more in a risk on environment. I'll be more in a risk off environment. Then I will um, break that down a little bit. So then is it local or global? Who's being affected? If we're in a risk off environment, who's the most affected by that risk off environment, right? So let me just um, kind of break this down. So first things first is... Uh, where is my pen tool? Right, draw, I'll do it in this color, do it in a white color, right? So are we in risk off, right? Or risk on, row, row, or risk on, risk off, right? Which one are we in? And then if we're in more of a risk on or risk off scenario, meaning that, you know, it's a, it's a scale, yeah? This being, you know, the most extreme, for example, that might be the most extreme off, this might be the most extreme on where are we subjectively on that scale now i know from you know we've got lots of risk off going on we're definitely in this half uh supposed to be an arrow sorry um of of the risk off uh half because we've got various different um uh risk off events right we've got you know russia and ukraine you've got uh high inflation for example you've got um china potential economic slowdown coming in and coronavirus so we're definitely in this half 
but then it's not just, you know, uh, uh, I guess the, the devil is in the detail. You can't just say, all right, risk off. All right, we're just going to start buying the yen and buying the Swiss franc and selling everything else. There are nuances to just buying, you know, risk on and risk off. So who is the most affected by risk on and risk off? Because not every single risk on and risk off event should be treated the same. So some countries actually benefit from risk off, right? Um, and typically we know that the yen does, but in um, in in this scenario and currently as we're going through our risk off events, global and local, it looks like the commodity currencies are doing really well, um, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar and the, uh, and the New Zealand dollar, right? And even the US dollar as such. So I'm just basically doing a top down, yeah, analysis. Then I'm going into the details, what, currencies are one you know twos and threes versus you know six sevens and eights why do i want to be a buyer of one two or three or do i actually want to be a seller of you know one two or three right because on the cycle you know if you're looking at the currency cycle there's there, there will be times where you know uh, and a, a currency that is you know strong may become weak and a currency that is weak potentially may become stronger or appreciate right so you have to just justify and validate the numbers and then from there, I'm looking at the bank analysis, right? So the bank analysis it really solidifies, and I'm choosing my pairs. So let me go back. I'm choosing my pairs from the, uh, uh, from the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. And then the bank analysis is really what you want to, you know, focus on in regards to it gives validation to whatever ideas you've come up with and pairs that you want to trade based off of your knowledge of the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, right? So that would be Citibank, Mizuho, MUFG, RBC, for example, you know, we've got a list of, of bank analysis uh, to read through. And there is a lot to read through, to be fair, you don't have to necessarily read through everything. Um, but if you have, if you're kind of time limited, then I would say look at forecasts, right? Forecasts will tell you pretty much the direction of travel, yeah? Uh, whether they're, you know, generally long or short. So if you don't, if you can't read, if you haven't got time to read, um, you know, the details and maybe the, the exact reasons why, which I always advise, but if you can't, um, if you're time poor in that sense, then forecasts will be, you know, the, 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 the confluence. This is like the ultimate confluence to your trading idea. And then from there, it's just a case of looking at um, news, right? Looking at news um, if you want to. So it's just keeping your finger on the pulse. Bloomberg's, you know, the, the INGs and the, and the articles that I post in the channels, in like, for example, the, the, the Yen channel, the, uh, the, the country's channels, right? So everything I post in here, right is the news supportive of that you know we're posting every day or every week supportive of that trade idea right so we're looking for or i'm looking for um quotes specifically quotes if i can you know especially from um sites like pound sterling live um you know and, and bloomberg etc which support which continue to support my trade idea yeah. So it's just more fundamental confluences from the smart money. Right. Um, this is the smart money concepts. Anyone who, who's talk, who talks about smart money concepts and doesn't talk about fundamental analysis, how can you be smart and you're not talking about fundamental analysis? That's no slight to, to anyone who's done trade technical analysis. But this is the smart money. This the smart money, you know, Derek Halpenny, head of research at Global Markets, MUFG, is not talking about technical analysis. He's talking about the reasons why they're getting long and short, you know, based off of real smart money concepts, which is GDP, interest rates, inflation, you know, risk off and risk on. All right. So um, and that's really it. That is literally what I do you know, day in, day out, week in, week out. And I guess when you start doing this stuff, when you when you really start off doing it, it can be overwhelming, by the way, guys. It can be overwhelming, right? So you will um, find or you can find that, you know, with, with everything, there's a learning curve. Yeah, there is a, a, it can be a steep learning curve because the information, there's a lot of information to, to, to kind of go through right it's like where do I start what do I do um 
but I have numbered the course and I guess the uh, the channels um, in order for you to kind of follow, right? The, 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 the channels are in, you know, an order for a reason. So um, if you just follow the channels, even if you're starting off with the fundamentals on, you know, channel 20, for example, you start off on 20, watch the two um, uh, webinars, then go to 21, then go to 22, then go to 23 and complete the actual test. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 all in order. Don't try not to skip anything and just work your way down. But um, another thing I wanted to talk about as well, just quickly talking about new. One second, I'm going to mute your, you guys' mics. Mute, mute, mute. Welcome, Spank. Welcome. Um, who was it as well? Who came in? Justin. Welcome, Justin. Um, one of the things that you want to do as well, because I guess it ties into... Um, uh, you know, being overwhelmed with news, right? Now, one of the, I guess, one of the uh, sites that is one of my favorites is Bloomberg, right? If it's not on Bloomberg, then it's probably not worth um, even considering in a sense of, I'm not saying that, uh, maybe that's wrong of me to say, but not say that Bloomberg isn't the be all and end all because there's many different news sources, right? But generally, if it's if it's really important, Bloomberg will pick up on it. Yeah. And if you if you notice, I only really go to like three main sites. Right. Um, which is well, about four main sites, which is the Guardian blog for basically day to day stuff. Um, Bloomberg, Pound Sterling and um, and ING. Right. Uh, lots of news here day in, day out. Absolutely, Rishi, Rishi. But it's it's focusing on what's the most important. And to us, the most important things, again, I always say this, all roads lead to what? GDP, interest rates, inflation, and, of course, unemployment, right? This is what we should be focusing on. And so when I'm looking at news, right, when I'm looking at news and I'm going to some, something like Bloomberg, right, and I'm going to the economics tab. What am I? What are my eyes tuning into? What am I focusing in? Focusing in on? Um, and it's anything to do with again monetary policy, GDP, interest rates, uh, unemployment, any you know bank speeches. That's what I'm focusing on, right? I'm not looking at you know again. You could look at politics and Ukraine update because that's more risk sentiment, etc. Um, but am I looking at ruble erases, evasion loss, even as default risk? I'm not trading the, the ruble, right? And if I even if I was and I'm concerned about risk, then I would just go into something like gold or silver, right? That's pretty much what we do. Um, so I'm just trying to focus in on the main things. So I'm not looking at, you know, German factory orders fall as economy faces Ukraine war fallout, right? So you've got the keyword, you've got economy there. So I can read in the headlines. I'm already, I already want to be short on the euro because I've already done my, um, oh, do you know what? That's, that, that's escaped me. Uh, just looked at that. See, interest rate hikes, right? So we've got IMF urges Switzerland to consider interest rate hikes. So that's interesting right there. So that could be a potential shift in, um, uh, direct shift in, you know, monetary policy, right? So there we are. That's something I'm going to, you know, read a bit later or post in the group a bit later. I, will, I already want to be short in on the uh, on the euro, right? I was already short on the euro, taking profit, Um earlier today on that euro dollar uh but because i'm still short on the euro or my bias is still short on the euro german factory orders fall as economy faces ukraine will fall out so i could go into that and read the details or i could just take the headline for what it is as far as it's pretty much negative or you know business as usual it supports my trade idea right so i'm just literally scanning through the headlines to see what make like makes sense to my trade ideas and the trades that I'm in. Right. So if I'm talking, if I'm thinking about risk off, obviously, you know, China COVID outbreak hit spending with more damage to come. So that's something to be aware of as well, because that's, you know, China economics. And again, we don't trade the Chinese one, but from a risk off sentiment perspective, that could be something coming down the pipeline. Right. Um, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just literally looking through um, the headlines and then trying to, um, I guess, really focus in on the ones that are directly um, uh, 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 
correlated to, to, to my trades. And it's going to be lots of things. And this does take time to do. It's not a skill that you can just get just like that. It comes with, uh, with experience, right? So the more you do and the more you read, you actually learn. It's like speed reading, right? Um, you know, the more you do it and the more you practice it is the better you become. Um, so it's just a case of understanding. You're going to have to read a few articles. You're going to have to pick, you know, sense from nonsense, as my dad always says. You know, basically, you might read some articles that might be like, nah, that was a waste of time. But you had to read it to know that it was a waste of time so that you know what to potentially look for, not look for in the future. So 